Andrew Urquhart with you on a Friday morning and, well, a whole bunch to celebrate in sport recently. A couple of weeks ago, our top uh, cricket teams uh, made international headlines with two incredible wins. The Black Caps over India in the Test Cricket and the White Ferns beating South Africa to claim the T20 World Cup. And in fact, the uh, the trophy for that, I understand, touches down in Christchurch today, which is very exciting indeed. I'm uh, so happy to be joined by former White Fern and uh, ex-cop Katie Perkins. Kia ora, good morning. Thanks for your time today. Tēnā koe, Andrew. Tēnā koutou. It is, I mean, this is very significant. Um, some people would say this is not only a game changer for uh, for women's cricket, but for women's sport in, in general. Would you agree? That's a pretty massive moment, particularly uh, in the cricket world uh, for New Zealand. We haven't won a white, a white ball uh, World Cup since 2000 when the White Ferns did that at home way back then. But it's been a long time between drinks for that and, yeah, I think for me that when the Black Ferns won the Rugby World Cup here in Aotearoa a few years ago, that sort of set a light women's sport in Aotearoa. And then we had the FIFA World Cup and around that as well. Uh, so this now for the White Ferns to also pick up some silverware as well sort of puts them up in that sort of spotlight alongside some of the other more recognised women's teams in Aotearoa. So it's massive for cricket, I think, to be like, hey, we're also succeeding at the top of the world stage. Yeah, and hey, not only the silverware, but some significant cash. We'll get we'll get onto that in in a moment. <laughs> but um, talk to us about your your personal journey. Now, uh, no longer part of the team, but almost I, I imagine you almost feel like it because you you know some of these people personally. You kind of wish you were over there playing. I imagine. Oh, there was a few moments of FOMO, that's for sure. Where I just was like, oh, you know, did I pull the pin a bit early, and then I. <laughs> struggled to even get up from sitting on the ground or something. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah too yeah. broken and old for that. But, uh, yeah, definitely. I, I know all the all the girls in that team and um, some I've played with for a long time. Uh, some of the young ones were just sort of coming into the scene as I was starting to finish off. So, yeah, I've played alongside or against all of them. So definitely really happy for them personally. Um, for my good friend Susie Bates in particular, uh-huh. uh, she's – toiled away for years and years has been one of the best players in the world for most of that time i remember in 2013 we were at the world cup in india for the one day world cup and she was the best player at the tournament and she deserved to be lifting the trophy because she was that good but unfortunately the rest of us weren't quite at her level and weren't able to do the job for her so for her to now have that silverware uh that she's been able to pick up is i think amazing and just just right uh, tell us about, I suppose, your own journey. Was this uh, always a childhood dream, I suppose, to to play cricket, to represent the country? Uh, what did that look like for you, Katie? Oh, yeah. I'm, it was my biggest dream. It was the dream I had from as soon as I was playing cricket with my cousins and in the front yard and in the cul-de-sac near their house. Yeah. Uh, I would have been three or four years old. And I thought back then I wanted to be a black cat because I didn't know there was a women's team. So I thought <laughs> I had to be a guy. Yeah. Like, but then they, they confirmed for me, no, there's a women's team. So I was like, okay, sweet. As well. I can keep being a female. That's a good start. <laughs> and then um, and then from there, yeah, it, it was the dream. And I, I had it up on my wall. Each time I'd represent a club team, rep, uh, Auckland team, whatever, I'd hang up that representative hat on the wall and then at the end I always had a picture of a well, space for the white ferns cap okay. and that always kept me pretty focused on what my dream was and so the day when I achieved that was yeah really special and I've never cried with joy until that moment when wow. I got that phone call. That is, that is significant. What's what's it like being uh, and particularly T20 because I mean just the, the pace, the energy, uh, the spotlights, the world attention there, uh, what's it like being part of T20 at an international level? I think it's changed even since when I finished up at the end of 2020, I I played my last game for New Zealand. And in that short time, things have just gone on the massivest upward trajectory. Uh, It's pretty incredible. Uh, So, yeah, I sit back sort of almost shaking my head in amazement. And it's beautiful. It's amazing that the girls are getting that recognition. Uh, It shows how professional the game now is and how much money there is going around that 
means there's nowhere to hide. And yeah. so, you know, for years, women are like, you know, why aren't we getting the attention? Like, give us the attention. We're um, toiling away. We're doing all the mahi, but we don't get the credit. Well, now there's no, we can't hide because yeah. there is attention, there is money. So uh, with that comes criticism at times mm-hmm. but then also comes these times to celebrate because of amazing success so i hope the girls really enjoy this time let's talk about the money because i mean this is a significant purse and uh for for each individual person uh this this is a you know huge boost to their finance and it is a bit i suppose a bit of a game changer in the way in which we see things um having this level of prize money though is it healthy for the sport? Is it healthy for the individuals that 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 uh, that sport has become so financial? In your opinion, uh, that's a weird one. If you ask the Cricket Players Association, they'd say it's absolutely right. Me personally, I was someone who never played for the money, and because there wasn't any money to play for back then, <laughs> yeah. so um, I literally played for the love of it. And you've got girls in that team like Susie Bates, Sophie Devine, the ones who've been around a long time who they also only played in the era early on where it was playing for the love of it. Yeah, It's changed in the last 15 years to something very different and now pay parity with the men for prize money and also for um, when our teams play against whoever, their yeah. match fees are the same as the men get. So it's not a question of should the woman be getting that much, it's actually just should Cricketers generally begin yeah. that much. It's, it's an equity question. Parity. Yeah, and as as, yeah, as yeah. you were saying, uh, you know, if, if we're going to celebrate this, we celebrate it on equal terms in that regard. Yeah. Does this open new doors? I suppose to say that you know that this is the the winning team of T Twenty. Does does it o- open new doors, perhaps, for lucrative contracts in uh, in other clubs overseas? Is that is that potentially one of the outcomes of this win? Yeah, I think you've seen over the last few years where like Big Bash over in Australia, the yep. ones Big Bash started up, and we had a lot of our women's contingent from the New Zealand team over there. And then the number sort of dwindled away over the last few years as our players just weren't reaching that top of the uh, top of the game yep. as often. Now, out of this World Cup success, I think it's shone a light on some of our young guns coming through. Uh, like Georgia Plimmer, Eden Carson, uh, Fran Jonas has already picked up a T20 contract in the West Indies previously. But I think, yeah, it's for that new crop who've now had the exposure and have been seen to perform at the very top level in pressure environments. That'll be what those franchise across, franchises across the world be thinking, oh, yep, she's probably worth an investment. And, and hey, that's got to be good for, uh, well, not just women's cricket, but New Zealand women's cricket, uh, for these women to get uh, the the top level exposure and, and opportunities to play internationally, bringing that back to the New Zealand team, that's going to be good for us long term, right? Yeah, that's always been the argument that the players and the Players Association have pushed for that every chance that a player gets to expose themselves to new coaching, a higher level or just a high standard of cricket, is only good for them as a player personally to develop, but then what it brings when they come back into their other environments, it's, yeah, you can see people feed off this new information. I had the opportunity to be alongside the Adelaide Strikers for a season during a weird COVID time. And what I got to learn in that time was, one, the resource that Australia's got is incredible and crazy, uh, and we can't match it, but you can still match it in heart, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, just there was the ways they reviewed games and scouted ahead of games and just all the little one percenters they did that you're like, oh yeah, okay, we yeah, can, yeah. we might not be able to meet at the exact same level due to resourcing, but we can push close to it in other ways. And, and hey, that's always been the, the Kiwi sports story, really. You know, this little country at the bottom of the South Pacific, we don't have the resources of, of some of the bigger nations. We don't have the resources of our our um, our cousins across the Tasman, but we can win World Cups. I mean, we've, we've again, we've just demonstrated that today. And uh, I mean, very exciting. It's the 1st of November. It's not even summer yet. We've got a full summer of cricket ahead for, uh, for women's cricket and for men's cricket. What's ahead for the women's team, do you think, Kate? Well, yeah, just on the point of the timing, it's perfect timing for New Zealand to win a World Cup just before us going into our own summer. You couldn't wish it better. Like yep. When we had the World Cup here and think, was it 2021, 
that the problem was it was in March. And yeah. so then yeah. that all was great, but then we went into playing rugby. So yeah. we yeah. lost that momentum. But yeah, now we've got girls going, whoa, we just won a World Cup. That looked cool. Yeah. I'm going to give that a go this summer. So that's awesome in that regard. And then for the women, yeah, they've, well, at the White Ferns level, they've got Australia coming over just before Christmas. Mm-hmm. So that'll be a good feisty battle, no doubt. Oh, yeah. Uh, Aussie will be licking their wounds a bit from having not brought the cup home, well, back to Australia, obviously, yeah, yeah. Uh, after being easy favourites. Uh, and then after that, I think they've got Sri Lanka in the back end of the summer and again, another little series against Aussie. So plenty of cricket and yeah. also the Super Smash competition during late December and January will be pretty exciting for just local fans to get out and watch their domestic teams playing because it's really good cricket. It's developed so well. It's, it's an exciting brand of cricket to watch. And, and this has just uh, brought such a boost to the, to the sport, both the men's and the women's sport and, and the trophy coming home today. Absolutely fantastic. uh, Something we can celebrate as a nation. Well, Hey, um, Katie, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us today. All the best uh, for, for you. What, what's, um, I mean, now that you've retired, as it were, from uh, from international cricket, what's keeping you busy now? Oh, yeah, definitely retired from all cricket, to be fair. <laughs> Just body couldn't keep up. But um, yeah. I actually been studying te reo Māori for the last two years, wow. full time. Um, yeah, I left the police after a career of just under 10 years and, uh, yeah, just really changed my direction, I suppose. So I was at Te Wānanga Takiura last year and yeah. then been fortunate enough to be at Te Wānanga Ihurangi this year, which is... Um, the Reo Māori Institution, uh, which is a faith base um, and is alongside Laidville College yeah, yeah. Um, I- out West Auckland. So, yeah, it's been an amazing time this year. I just handed in my last assessment <laughs> last night. Yeah. So I'm just in celebration mode, to be honest. Uh, and, uh, c- uh, yeah, c- celebrating down. a win in, in, a different, uh, in a different direction. But, hey, good on you for doing yeah. that. We wish you all the best for whatever happens next. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us today. Awesome. Tēnā koe. Kia ora. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.